let me say thank you. Thank you for making this time to spend time with us. I'm so excited that you are with us. Though I can't see you, I'm thankful that you made the time to make this moment a moment of insight, instruction, and education, and enlightenment in the word of the Lord. As I've asked you before on days past, I'll ask you to do it again. I need you to touch base with about four or five people that you know who have Facebook access. Let them know that there is a strong word out of the word of the Lord that is going forth. And you have been helped. And if you've been helped, I'm sure you want someone else to be helped. You agree with me, right? Thank you so much. Please do that for us. Let me share with you early on that on next Wednesday, we will not have our presentation, but we will do it on Monday, which will be June the 19th. Amen? Amen. So I'm praying that you will be here. Unless something changes, and it is almost subject to change, but I just want to share with you Amen. I want you to pray for the saints that are looking at me, wondering what in the world did you just say? <laughs> Amen. There's much to be gleaned out of God's word today. Yes. Keep going back to this question that was raised about why do Christians suffer, which is a very valid question. And we've been marching through, looking at this landscape in the life of Job yeah. and lifting out of the pages of history uh, aspects of his life that I believe will help us to learn and to lean on the Lord and to know that he is in absolute control. And we make that return today wanting to part four <clears throat> look at pain and suffering. And I'm going to tell you that early on that um, this is a very enlightening moment. And, and, and I believe that there are some challenges that are going to come out of it. Uh, some things that will be said that you probably will, would say at, before, oh, that won't happen to me, or I wouldn't do that, or oh, I wouldn't think that way. And, and I want to say to you, be careful with that. Because yes, I think life should have taught all of us by now. Never say never. Let me pray and then let me move into this presentation today. Even now we pray, leaning on you for help, insight, instruction, and guidance. Open eyes of our minds that we may see the wonderful things that are written in your law. I pray, Father, that you will allow this lesson even to serve as a source of prevention and perspective that it will help us to have a better understanding of the human situation. Thanking you for Jesus today. Amen. Let me begin in an unusual way or different by putting a question out on the floor. Of course, I will answer, but I'm always looking forward to hearing from you. I want to ask um, have you ever heard of the word trauma? Yeah, yeah. Trauma? Yeah. Um, they even have units in the hospital that they call trauma units. Yeah. You've heard of the word, right? Yes. Uh, when you hear the word trauma, um, you got any uh, definition that you could connect to it as you understand it uh, briefly? Uh, or a word that you would associate with it. Uh, when you hear the word trauma, what comes to mind? Someone real quick, loudly. Extreme. You say extreme, okay? Yes, ma'am. Something dreadful. Extreme, dreadful. Yes, sir. Life threatening. Life threatening. Hmm. Yes. Distress. Distress. 
life-threatening, dreadful, distressing. Yes, ma'am. Very serious. Very serious. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Painful. Painful. Yeah, yeah, yes. Bloody. Bloody. It could be. Yeah, okay. Um, I, I'll accept that. Yes, ma'am. Unbearable. Wow. Um, hurtful, painful. Yes, ma'am. Severe pain. Uh, this is not lightweight, right? No. Um, and when we talk about putting a definition to this word trauma, some have suggested that it is an emotional response that's caused by an experiencing a single incident or a series of distressing traumatic matters. Um, there are different aspects of trauma. Uh, there is emotional trauma. There is psychological trauma. Um, Psychology Today, which is a, a leading magazine, it says, and I quote, that trauma is a person's emotional response to a distressing experience. Let me repeat that again. It's a person's emotional response to a distressing experience. All of us in here, if we have not experienced trauma, we are all on the radar for it happening. Um, I know you love Jesus. I know you pray. But don't think for a minute that those spiritual qualities keep trouble or trauma from showing up. Okay, y'all looking at me real unusual. Because I need to also say, since trauma comes in everybody's life, whether it's psychological, emotional, everybody doesn't deal with trauma the same way. Trauma affects everybody differently. How you may respond does not mean that that is the end all to all of how it's supposed to be accepted or dealt with by everybody else. How you deal with trauma doesn't mean that that is globally accepted. Uh, there, there, there are people who have gone, who have dealt with trauma and are dealing with it right now. Yeah. And some of us would say, well, they aren't doing too well. Well, let me ask you this. How well would you deal with it if what they had to experience fell in the lap of your life? Yeah. It's, it's always easy to make decision and determination about how somebody should respond to an event or a situation that's not yours yet. Yeah. You, you need to stop thinking like that. You need to stop acting like that. Let me ask you, are you, then are you telling me that you mastered yours? We cannot decide how long the traumatic matter is going to have a traumatic effect on someone. Can I tell you today that, that there are some people that are, are dealing with trauma from a grief perspective and it hasn't been easy to overcome. Yeah. It, it's been a very serious matter, first of all, to have to face. And then to have to live with it. Yeah. Uh, let me just throw this out in terms of psychological trauma uh, in the mind. Mm -hmm. Because it, it's not just felt emotionally. Trauma also has an effect on your mind. Yes, and I ain't calling you crazy. Mm -hmm. But there are psychological effects 
that trauma can have on any of us. Uh, you're talking about an overwhelming experience of extreme events that exceeds or goes beyond a person's ability to cope with or to even understand. You, you ever have something that happened in your life uh, that caught you off guard or even when you saw it marching your way and you couldn't get out of the way of it like a tidal wave or a tornado. You saw it coming. You knew it didn't have good or good news connected with it at all. You couldn't run from it. You couldn't evade it. You couldn't hide. This is not a hallucination. This is not a mirage. This is not you, you, you think you see it, but it ain't. Oh, no, no, you see it. It, it, it's real. It's unfolding. And you can't hand it off to somebody else. Hello, everybody. Making sense? You've got to deal with it. It's got your name on it. It's got the name of your family on it. And how you deal with it may not be how your brother or your sister or your children deal with it. How likely is it that Job suffered what I'd like to term as a traumatic moment? Yeah. I want to tell you today, it is extremely possible. And when you read what we have read, we go back as a form of review just to lift and show you some things that we probably never thought about. That I can tell you today that this is the darkest night of Job's experience. Yes. And all of what has happened to him, all of what has befallen him, has brought him to this point when we get to chapter 3. Mm -hmm. um, I want you to look, if you will, at chapter 1. Because when the first attack happened, it's amazing how Job responded with firm faith. You got to again remember. Um, all of what is listed. About his wealth. In verse. Number. One. Two. And three. It speaks about he was. Not just. A righteous man. But he was also a rich man. Righteous before God. Financially sound and stable. Remember, in the economy of the culture of this day, all of these animals that are listed are emblematic of economic wealth. Yeah. Um, if I were to just elevate it, Job looked real good at the bank. Uh, Job didn't have to hurt for nothing financially. Hello, somebody? Yeah. Um, Job had a righteous resume. Look at verse number one. Blameless, mm -hmm. upright, yeah. feared God, respected God, did not involve himself in ungodly behavior, lifestyle, lifestyle choices. Job was the, if we were to make it 20th century, Job was the ideal Christian man. And what he had materially did not have, was not the reason why he was the way he was from a godly perspective. Yeah. Though Satan wanted to say the only reason why Job was the way he was, the way he was before God was because of how God blessed him. Yeah. Let me ask you this. What if God let you get broke today and you ain't got two pennies to rub together and you were financially flat? Could God trust you to still be faithful? Even if your finances 
throughout the window. Let me ask you this. What are you serving God for anyway? Yeah. Just because of he been good to you? He heard and answered your prayers? What happens if God were to just take, take some time away from you? Yeah. Uh, let some stuff happen. You said God wouldn't do that to me. Be careful. I don't think you know him that well to make a statement about what he won't let happen. Um, when, you, when you look at, uh, let me get back and get to where I'm trying to go. Uh, Satan and, 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 and Joel, uh, I'm sorry, and God, uh, they got this conversation. And, and, and Satan uh, let God know, uh, I, I'd like to get him, but I can't get him because you got him. You got this hedge around him. You got this protection around him. Uh, but if you let me have my way, I can get him to curse you to your face. How stay talk? Hello? Yeah. God gives Satan permission. Mm -hmm. He leaves out of the presence of God. Mm -hmm. And one thing after another. You know, this, 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 these events aren't happening uh, maybe one this month and then maybe one the next month and then one three, three months later. Right. One after another. One after another. Before one servant can finish talking, here comes another one on the heels of the one that showed up. Can't you hear him? Joe, I got some bad news for you, man. After he finished, here comes another one. Joe, I got some bad news for you. Here comes another one. Joe, I got some bad news for you. And then talk about final straw. Joe, can't you imagine? You need to sit down and need to tell you this because I don't know if you can take it standing up. All ten of your children were crushed in the house that they were celebrating in. Not one survived. Y'all yeah. awful quiet. Yeah. Yeah. You need to capture this. And I'm the only one that made it out alive to tell you. Financially flat in one day. Yeah. Wow. You don't think that has some bearing on his mind? You, you, you telling me that that would not serve as a traumatic moment? It sure would. How would you handle it if the bank were to call you and tell you that somebody got a hold of your finances yeah. and they're not going to replace money that got stolen out of all of your, facts about it, all of your accounts. Even your 401k is zero. You have no money at all. Yeah. Come on, talk to me, y'all. Done. All that you have invested, all that you have sacrificed and saved in a moment's notice, please don't tell me it won't happen. It will, yes. I, 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 I'm telling you, we ought to thank God that what has happened to others have not happened to us yet. Yes, yes, yes sir. Yeah. Yeah. What happens to your faith when your finances fall flat? What happens on a day when people that you love or someone gone? Yeah. Whether it be something that you saw walking, you saw uh, stepping in, and you had time. To, to, to spend with them and to talk with them and to make memorable moments. Joe ain't got that. Yeah. 
He may have seen the children in the morning and in the evening go. Yeah. Ain't that a traumatic moment? Yes, sir. Amen. But look at what, what's going on here. In verse number 21. He makes a paramount statement, bro. Where? Yes, sir. He said, I came out of my mama's womb with nothing, mm -hmm. and I'm going to leave here with nothing. Yeah. The Lord gave. Yeah. Lord has taken away. Yes, sir. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That 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 happened as a man speaking on firm faith. But the tax aren't over, Amber, because Satan shows back up in chapter 2. Uh, it's round 2. Didn't get him the first time. <clears throat> he ain't over, it ain't over and he ain't done. That, that might be something that's going on with some of us right now. He tried to stop you from coming to worship, but you wouldn't. He tried to stop you from praying, but he was unsuccessful. He tried to get you to stop believing and trusting the Lord, and you got, you dug your heels in and say, I am not going to be moved away from my faith. Yes, sir. It does not mean that the fight is over. Hear me when I tell you. He's relentless, and he's not going to take no for an answer. It's right here in the text. He goes back. He and God have another conversation. And God says the same thing to him about Job the second time that he did first. But then God says something about this matter on the second round that he didn't say the first time. He says, you caused me to make me raise my hand against him in ways I don't want to. How do you view God then when you know he could have stopped death, but he didn't? Yeah. How do you deal with God then when you know that there are some events that have happened and are going on in your life right now, be it health-wise, emotional, mm -hmm. mental, and it seems as though all God is doing is just watching. Am I making any sense to anybody? Amen. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. He attacks his health. I showed you a few days ago that these sore bones were so bad that when his friends saw him at a distance, they didn't even recognize him. They disfigured his face. Can you hear me now? Yeah. yeah. They smell. Mm -hmm. He's got to live with bad odor. Pus comes up out of him. One take, one part of the chapter talks about even worms were resident in him. Mm -hmm. Scratching. Itchy. Can't seem to get no relief nowhere. And Job's lost his appetite. He's he losing weight. Yeah. But there's somebody in this house who we don't know how supportive she was until she got to this point. How do you deal with remarks from your family members or even from your spouse who have sounded off like they've lost faith in God and even seek to try to get you to submit to those same thoughts and feelings as well? Yeah. It's almost as though you could hear you, yeah, I, she, you can almost hear her talk. We were doing good, living, 
Li living fly and fine. Didn't have to worry about nothing. Mm -hmm. And then one day, God does this to us. Yeah. Flat broke. <clears throat> and, and if that wasn't enough, he took my children too. Can't yeah. Yeah. you almost hear us say, what do we need to worship God for after this? What, what, what's the use of praying? What, pray for what? What we got to pray for? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Really? And, 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 and this is what God sent in our family? I, 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 I'm saying some stuff that maybe some of you all might be too scared to say. But it doesn't mean you ain't thinking it. And there's somebody somewhere in this land who's having a job experience full of trauma. And they are at a point where they might be thinking of bailing ship on the Father. Go to church. You mean I'm going to go back to church and for at this? Uh, what, what, what am I going to sit in the sanctuary for and talk about the Lord is good when all this stuff has happened? Well, we find something going on with Job in round two that we didn't see in round one. It doesn't mean that He's less of a believer. But there's something going on we need to talk about. We don't, we don't, we don't talk really about the, the Job situation. We read it. Let me ask you this. Did you submerge, immerse, your, immerse yourself in this man's story and situation? What, what kind of empathy did you feel for him when he lost his finances? Yeah. What kind of empathy did you feel when the report is he lost his children? Yes. You know, it's one thing when you read about something or things happen in other, other folks' family, other folks' lives. But do you care enough even when it's not your turn yet? You know, you we 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 read these things. We, you know, it's almost like we just take it to be part of the story. What happens when it's part of your story? Yeah. 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 We we gotta make this live, we gotta make this personal. Because before night falls. Who in here knows, or even you watch it, yeah. what God is a, about to allow to be unleashed in your life. And think about what effect it's going to have. Because I want you to understand that Job got discouraged and he had a right to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Job got to a breaking point. What's yours? Everybody has one. Yeah. Uh, thank God it ain't been tested yet. I don't want to find out what mine is. I ain't signing up for that. You ain't got to sign up for it. It'll find you. Yeah. And what? How, how do you deal with God when you know I know you could have stopped this. Yeah. What happens to your fellowship with the Father when it looks like he's failed you? <clears throat> Who is it to say that he had to stop it anyway? Yeah. He has a will. And, and the point at which person in the breaking coin, they, they can become deeply discouraged. 
They can even become dis depressed. They can get to the point where they will even want to give up on life. Uh, I I've served God a long time. Yeah. And I've seen some folks that are, that are Christians who got to a place where they didn't want to live no more. Mm -hmm. um, we, we, we don't know how, how much time has gone by since chapter 1 and chapter 2. But we do know when we follow the text yeah. that there's a lot of losses that have taken place that have had impact mm -hmm. on him. Yeah. Well, when you look at chapter 3, chapter 3 still shows us a man who loves God, but yet he is still going through the dark night of his soul. And God has not removed the darkness of the soul. Amen. Can I tell you again, by way of, of a loving warning, everybody has a breaking point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Everybody in this room and even you watching, can get to a point where, yeah, yeah, hello, yeah. where you can become discouraged, disgusted, mm -hmm. you can even get depressed. Yeah. You say, well, well, well Pastor, how, how can this be? Because we, we who are part of the, the people of God, and I need you to understand this. Just because you're Christian doesn't mean that there won't come a crunch and a crisis that can cause you to crumble and almost collapse. You ain't got no S on your chest. Hello? How can this be? Easy. Because all of us, though we are Christians, still are human beings. You, 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 you ain't, you ain't, you aren't bionic. Yeah. Yeah. There, 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 there are some who, who even convince people that if you are a Christian, then you wouldn't respond like this. Be careful with that. Yeah. I, I believe in telling the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I'm not here to sugarcoat anything because I'm a part of the human experience as well. Uh, depression ain't off limits in walking in my life. Mm -hmm. Disgust and disappointment. They don't care I'm a preacher. Amen. So, yeah. it'll happen to preachers too. Yeah. It'll happen to you too. And that's why you got to be very careful about arriving at swift judgment yeah. and saying people Ain't got faith. Yeah. Can it happen to you and me? Yeah. yeah absolutely. And can I tell you? It can have more than one round. Yeah. Can I tell you? It can come in more than one way. Yeah. Hello? I I'm telling you, this is we, we got we get this is real stuff. Uh, just like Joel. We can have situations happen, watch this, where God doesn't turn things around when we want them to. Yeah. What do you do with God then? Yeah. How do you respond to him? What do you say about God when you know he could and he don't? When your family member took a fall and God could have easily not allowed that to happen, but he did. Yeah, yeah. How you gonna deal with it? Yeah. You gonna pout, stay angry at him? Show him something? No, no, I wouldn't suggest that. 
You have some stuff unfold in your life. And you say, dog, go to, I, I just finished reading the Bible. I just finished praying. Okay. If you think, no, if you are using prayer and reading the Bible as, 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 as almost like good luck charms, then you don't even have any idea what prayer yeah. and trusting God is all about. Yeah. I'm talking to some people right now who love him and still had to walk in the valley of sorrow. Yeah. God. Yeah. God. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm talking about some people whose hearts have been broken in so many little pieces. Not just about the death of the love, but, but in some other stuff. Yeah. That God could have prevented, but he didn't. Yeah. I ain't talking about other stuff. What about when, when it's you? Health failure. Uh -huh. You find yourself in some situations health-wise now that you never would have thought that would have happened to you. And yet, oh yeah, it's, it's you now. Yeah. How do you deal with God? And, and, and here again, well, okay, let, let's look at it. Chapter 3, verse 1 through 12. How are we doing? Great. I'm reading our New American Standard Version of the Bible. After Job opened his mouth, then the first time he's going to start talking. Listen to what he says. How, and you got to ask, well, how long were you feeling like this? Hmm. Cursed the day of his birth. Now, remember, Satan wanted him to curse God and die. Uh, Job, Job says, let the day perish on which I was to be born. And the night which said, a boy is conceived. Talking about him. Look at what he says. Uh, May that day be darkness. Let not God above care for it, nor light shine on it. Let darkness and black gloom claim it. Let a cloud settle on it. Let the blackness of the day terrify it. As for that night, let darkness seize it. Let it not rejoice among the days of the year. Let it not come into the number of the months. Behold, let that night be battle. Let no joy shall enter it. Let those cursed who curse the day, who are prepared to rouse Leviathan. Let the stars of it, of its twilight be darkened. Let it wait for light, but have none. Wow. Let it not even see the breaking of the day. Because it did not shut the opening of the mother's womb on high trouble from my eyes. Why did I not die at birth? Come forth from the womb and then die. Still born. Why did the knees receive me? Why should the breasts that I should suck? Wow. Wow. What, what do you hear? Come on. What, what do, you, do you hear anything? Anybody? Someone? What do you hear? Tell me. Somebody. Come on. Talk to me. So, Pastor, so what do you hear? He Wish he'd never been born. I didn't hear some, somebody else say something. Why, oh, why, why was I even born? What was the purpose? Anybody else hear anything else? Yes, sir. He didn't do what the devil wanted him to say. Wow. 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 You can come close. But look at what he's saying about what's going on with him now. Job is at a place where he wants to give up on life. You heard it. He says, for him, the day he was born should have never happened. You want to hear something else? He is also saying, watch this, if it was left up to him, that he would eliminate, 
He would even erase it. Wouldn't be no birthday. Yeah. Wouldn't be no birth. He even goes, man, I, I ain't making none of this up. You got to slow read this. Immerse yourself as though you are sitting next to him and hearing it come out of his own mouth with your own ears. Remember what verse number one said about him in chapter one. Upright man, hated evil, love God, family man. Look at what we are hearing out of the mouth of that same man in chapter three. What chapter are you and I at? That there's some stuff getting ready to happen if it hasn't already happened. That we haven't already thought some stuff, said some things, felt some way. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He even said, I want you to listen to this, how deep this is. He said, he even wished God would have taken the day of his birth off the calendar yeah. and that it had been all right with him. You say, what? Yeah. Bye, Pastor. Pastor, are you saying it's possible yeah. that you can get to a place in pain and suffering yeah. where you could wish you were I'm reading it. You read it too. I, I know that might bother you or mess with you. And because you may not have gotten to that place, be careful with saying never. Yes, sir. And I, I, I never say that. You ought to thank God that that ain't been tested. Yeah. Y'all ain't walking with yeah. You, you ought to thank God that, that there has not been some things or something so severe in your life that have hit you with such a tremendous impact mm -hmm. that you would almost say, man, I wish I was dead. Yeah. I, I, I wish that the, that, that the day I was supposedly born that it had never showed up on the calendar. God, if you if you wanted to, uh, with all that I'm dealing with right now and the stuff that I'm dealing with right now and the things that I'm living with, did, did you all fail to realize what he's living with? Yeah. Yeah. The man ain't got no money. The man is broke. Yeah. He's had to go to a funeral and look at 10 caskets. Yeah. Whoever stops to think about the traumatic impact of that, and then, yeah. now you got to deal with your own health. Look, Job is dying while he's living. Yes. Yes, yes. Smelling yes. a stench. That is, he ain't never, look, Job ain't never been in this situation before. You know, it'd be one thing if, if, if he had a, and then he could lean back on his experiences and say, well, you know, uh, been, he been there, done that. Come on, talk to me, somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-uh, uh-oh, no, no, oh, no, 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 no. This is this the first time for it. And it's an unwanted time. There's some, there's some things in life that can happen that you ain't got to have happened two or three times in order to really deal with how serious it is. Once is more than enough. And before we make judgment call on him at this time in his life, can I tell you, I believe we would do well to think about everything that he's had to deal with and how easy it is to place expectations on other folk that we can't be sure that we would have handled the same way. I, I've lived and worked among the people of God for quite a long time. And I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, I, I've seen some people walk away from the Lord 
because they lost a job. I've seen some people give up on God because a baby was stillborn. A mother died. A brother or a sister passed away. And you catch up with them and ask, you know, I ain't seen you in a while. Are you coming back to church? I, I don't know, Reverend. Um, I, 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 I'm still angry with the Lord. You know, Pastor, I prayed. And, and I asked God to do this or to do this. And I know he could. Yeah. And he did. Yeah. And it's almost like saying, because God didn't, then I ain't. Pain, tragedy, and suffering yeah. can cause us to lose perspective of life. Mm -hmm. yes. Oh yeah, it can. Yes, it can. Things that are dear to us, people that are dear to us, the trauma of loss can yeah. cause us to lose perspective on life. And can I tell you something else? They can also find us vulnerable. Yeah. You think you're strong now. Mm -hmm. you, you really think that you can handle anything that is thrown at you and come your way. Yeah. I, I'm thankful to God that he hasn't put me in that test arena yet. Lord, please. Um, I, I, I'll be honest and transparent because I don't know what my level of vulnerability is and, 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 and don't sit here and act like you know yours. Because for some of us, it, did, it, it, it didn't take losing a loved one or some money. So, so I, hello, come on and talk to me. You know some people who have gotten sick and you tell them to pray. Pray for what? What? Yeah. How you, are you still reading your Bible? For what? Am I making sense, y'all? Yeah. Because we got to be very careful in thinking that we know us so well what we wouldn't say, what wouldn't come out of our mouth, what wouldn't enter our minds. You don't know you as well as you think you do. Amen. Yes, sir. Everybody has a breaking point. And when those breaking points come, vulnerability, we just like walking with a target on the front and the back, and he ain't going to miss. He said, does that stop me from being Christian? I didn't say it stopped you from being Christian. I'm talking about, let's deal with the humanity here, yeah. of the reality of suffering and pain. Because in those moments, we can not only find ourselves vulnerable, but somebody help me. We can also make some exaggerated comments that we really don't mean. Yes. Yes, sir. But we feel. Yeah. That's how we feel. Oh, yeah. That's how you, you feel it right now. I just, I just feel like giving up. Hello? You going to tell me that ain't never happened to you? I, I, I just, it's like, like, I'm just at a point where, uh, I, I just, I just feel like just walking away. If I could find the exit, I'd do. I'd walk right through the door. You're going to tell me that that ain't never happened to you yet. And if you say no, you ought to be shouting and thanking the Lord. Yeah. Or hell all in here. Because I want to tell you, that it, it, it don't take a whole bunch of them. Just the right one with the right amount of pain yeah. can send you to a place psychologically, emotionally. Lord, help me in here. Saying some stuff. Yeah. Allowing whatever come up, come out. Yeah. And you ain't even trying to put a, a governor on your lips. No, no that's, can you say that? Shoot. Yes, you will. Oh, yeah, you will. Mm -hmm. uh, Job, Job, Job isn't talking about taking his life. He is saying, I want you to do it. 
I don't want you to answer, but let me throw this out at you. Have you ever gotten to the place where you have been so deeply entrenched in the trauma of your situation where you even wanted God to come and get you? When life and all that you're facing, even as a Christian, pushing you to the point where you wanted it to end. I'm not advocating suicide by any means. I'm just asking a question. Because I want you to know that the Joel darkness of the soul moment can happen to all of us. Yes. And so for the next few minutes, let me try to wrap this up real quickly. In talking about how to overcome despair God's way. Well, the first thing I'd like to tell you is that we need to realize that even the strongest Christian can become discouraged. Mm -hmm. no, no. Can I tell you today? That none of us are immune to the despairs of life. Yeah. But I need you to remember what the Bible said about it. But it never said that he couldn't entertain feelings like this when it comes to Job. That, yeah, righteous man, godly man, good father, probably, I'm sure more than likely he was a good husband. Just all around good man. All around a godly man. But understand this. It never hinted or suggested that when these kinds of severe matters hit him like they did, that he could not entertain feelings like he had. Second thing I want to share with you is that we can and we might suffer deeply on several levels all at one time. Yeah. Yeah. You know, here, 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 let, let, let's just say um, you're you, you already dealing with the front of uh, a, a, a child who, who has broken your heart and won't do right. Don't stop there. There's some other battles and some other stuff that can march right in right after that. But then thirdly, let's not keep you longer than you want to. Discouragement can cause us to lose perspective. Yeah. Why do you pray? Why do you why are you still praying? Why are you still believing? Here's a good place to ask questions. Yeah. The things that have happened to you in your family may have caught you off guard, surprised you. You didn't get no heads up on that day. Come on. Yeah. Job had no idea. Yeah. Did he? about what those domino effects, so to speak, were going to fall in his life. God, who knew it, didn't say a thing. Can, can we raise it even higher? What do you do when, let's say, Job prays, says his amen, and God doesn't say uh, yo, Joe, uh, need to talk to you. Sit down. Got to give your heads up for your FY, for your information. Uh, I want to let you know, uh, say, Satan is getting ready to come at you. No, he's, he, look, he's coming at you with all three barrels open. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I know what he's going to do. Uh, I'm going to tell you what he's going to do to you. He wouldn't even privy in that. How, how do you deal with it when after you finish praying, God doesn't give you no forewarning? 
about what's getting ready to happen. But I need you to remember this. In, in the midst of your moments of discouragement, when you have lost perspective, you can easily make some rash, not thought through decisions. Yes. How many people do you know? Maybe us have made some spur of the moment, immediate, rash, not thought through, emotion driven decisions that can have effect, not just right now, but even later. Yeah. Yeah. But let me hurry to say. Remember that God always has a purpose for high suffering. And he ain't got to tell us why. You say, what? Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, preacher. What, what did you just say? Here it is again. That God always yeah has a purpose behind human suffering. You say, you got to be kidding. I ain't playing with you and I ain't lying. There are, a lot, there are a lot of people, and I hear it often, and I know many of them mean well, and they read books, by folk who making money, talking about your purpose driven life and getting to know your purpose. I'm gonna tell you something. While some of those folks might be lying and some might be telling the truth, none of them know absolutely what God, what's behind the reasoning behind God is doing what God does. The only person who knows God's purpose is him. And if he chooses to make it known, that's his business. God don't owe me or you nothing. Report, excuse me? Oh, God don't tell me. Uh, look, you ain't strong arming God with your faith to make him talk to you and tell you why he does what he does, the way he does it or allows it, when he allows it to happen and the way he excuse me God don't owe none of us anything and, and, and you know think about this at, what, at this point in the day we still don't know what's lined up I told somebody the other day, I uh, got to thinking about this. If, 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 and, and you know, I, I, I thank the Lord that, I don't know about y'all, but I, I'm going to speak for me. I'm so glad God didn't give me a preview of the day. <laughs> no, I, I, I ain't the one you need to do that for, Lord, because it might be some stuff and I'm like, shoot, I'm staying home. <laughs> I, I ain't going outside. I ain't going in the driveway. I ain't going on the sidewalk. I'm staying here. And I hope you don't send it to the house too. Okay, come on. But I want you to always remember this. That we don't live our Christian lives on explanations. We live them on promises. Lo, I'm with you always. Oh, I got that. How about you? Romans chapter 8 verse 20. And we know that all things work together for the good of you. It may not be good to you, but it's for your good. Because through it, God is up to something you can't see. And he don't always tell you in advance what his intent is behind why he allows some stuff to happen. That love him. That ought to call him according to his purpose. Wow. And then, 
last few words of Philippians chapter 4 and verse 8 says, think on these things. This walk ain't, ain't filled with rose petals. There's some jagged rocks in the road on the follow me. The follow me doesn't give us the itineraries for the day. No. Can you imagine the Lord saying, well, well uh, uh, Brother Odom, here's the itinerary for today, and you're following me. Be like, uh, hey, hey, Lord, yo, yo, hey, Jesus, can I holler at you for a minute? That? Are you serious? I don't know. You, know. you say you'll be back tomorrow? Can we look it over the end? Can we that's some, they are non-negotiables. Yeah. Even in pain and suffering. We don't get to mark off what we want and what we don't want to go through. I wish it was that simple. Don't you? Or y'all off for quiet. I, I, I wish God gave us choices. I don't know where you got that one from. This ain't, this ain't no pre-selection. No. Uh-uh. Whatever he says is whatever he purposes. And whatever is behind his purpose in sending it, it's to his glory and for our good. Even if it takes us to the brink. And thank you that you know how far to take me and how far I can go. Because I say this and I'm done. The God who guides us is also the God who guards us. Thank you for your word today. Thank you for the lesson. I pray that somebody who doesn't know Jesus, that they would run to the cross and ask what must I do to be saved. I pray for those of us that do know you, that our faith will be strengthened even if we find ourselves in the fire right now. Even with despondency hanging low and depression on its way, help us to not give up, give in and give over. Thank you for your word today. In Jesus' name.